I would never have let the drill start if I had known the consequences. It trapped us here. You trapped us here. I am doing my duty. It is the right thing to do. I am a machine. I cannot do wrong. Yes, you can. I am a machine. Can a calculator commit evil? Can a watch do good? You are projecting onto me the personality you wish, whether that is good or evil. But I am just a speaking clock, and at the third stroke, the time will be 3.41 and 55 seconds. Make up your mind, Tom. Are you a robot? Or are you DF beings? Are you jealous? Okay, so I imagine these last couple of puzzles are going to be the hardest. Yes. There it makes sense. Highly baby. Um. Oh, we can use this one. Who can we? Oh, wait, I see. So those ones are just moving by themselves. Whatever is controlling the screen picked. Okay. Well, where the heck did I put the blue board? Going on J. Get the pink one, yeah. And then I'll use that one instead of the green one. Actually, I can take this one too. You'll see what's useful. Yeah, I have access to all of them except for the green one. I kind of want the green one though, so I'll just be a fairly level. Kind of useful that you can go back, even if it's one way, like Tom can always go back to Ava. Although, I don't know if it makes the most sense when you think about it, but that's why we don't think about it.
can go to the system so clean. By C I mean I by I I mean Tom and I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even know anymore, man. Here's a coincidence that my last name happens to be Cherry. Coincidence in quotation marks. I might just be machine all along. It'd be a lot faster if I just if uh, Tom had the green one and we could just do the things. But this works. So. And green is safe usually. Usually. Oh, that's it. Okay. Yep. Yeah, nope. Yeah, I just wasted time. We should attempt to communicate with Earth. Let them know. They might be able to help here. The ISA already knows all they need to. They may never know the details of what happened here. But Ava, the true test of a person's character is what they do when no one is watching. But you're always watching. And what does that have to really do with any of them? Why am I in the maze? <laughs> Have you designed this place? Uh, too many questions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can take this. Let's go up there. Just for now. Useful cameras be useful. Now the cameras are placed in such a way that there's no possible place for me to hide that I wouldn't be able to see them. Just clear them. That's why there's two cameras right there. Got a lot of game design. Question, how do I get one of these here? I've access to one, but it's not the most useful. I could put that one here and maybe give one back to Ava. One of these ones back. Um, hello. She is also stuck. Well, maybe it's healthy. So I think I could get back to that little. Oh, wait, I could just take one of time. I really need to go back to the lawn. I had to stop the ground crew leaving this planet. I think you would do the same. Would you kill a few to save all of humanity? Or would you damn all of humanity to save a few? There's a difference between murdering someone and leaving them to die. No, there is not. You can't just add and subtract life. It's not math. It's, it's more nuanced than that. Morality is logic.
again, if it's like the sake of all humanity, you kind of hope that you keep them to make the decision themselves. About like, at least I always try to explain it to them. Maybe they don't even know. What is interesting? There's a wing the worst carnival ride ever. Great alignment there, Ava. Guess I jumped up. That's a one. Ooh, what do you power? What do you power something? Interesting. Bye bye. Maybe stairs will be important later. I can't really travel further than this, can I? Because I need to be there to actually move this back and forth. There's more stairs over here. Ah, I could probably go diagonally, right? Maybe that's what they want. It's gonna funk you here for a second. <laughs> Take you with me. Okay. Let's get this nice sand centered. Best I can. Uh, it's probably okay. And then you rotation. Oh, look at that. Okay. Can you bring it a bit closer to me? Oh, that's pretty sweet. Nice. Um, I'll leave you there just in case I fall or something. We need to change the order. Oh. Ah yes, you need the blue ball now. Okay. That makes sense. It'd be really unfortunate if I could manage to fall somehow. But luckily I am a skilled individual. Uh, what's in there? Can't really tell. Ah, nope, that would be the the thing that powers that. A uh, good thing I have the red ball to do the job. Okay. All the way now. Switch the robot. Or maybe not all the way, I guess. I can go from there. And then I can always be on the robot when it turns around. Be on the bridge, I mean. Okay, cool. Such a cool game. I've been playing this for almost four hours now. Let alone, I'm like not even bored of it. So it's a good sign in my books. Okay. Can I even do this fast enough? Questionable. Hmm. Oh, wait, wait, wait to find out. I doubt it, but... No. Okay... Plan B... Can I position the bridge in such a way that I don't have to... get on... change... Very sketchy though. But, as far as I can see, there's no downside. If I fall, I can just try again quite easily. The stairs just there. 
No. Guess we try it. Try and see. I can still get across relatively easily. So, how wrong could it be? That's doable. That's potentially doable, potentially. Hey, okay. It wasn't as clean a solution as I was originally thinking. But nice nonetheless. These tests, Ava. They are about us working together. The machine assisting the human. See how much better we work together. As a machine, I can enhance your morality. And as a human, I can solve these tests. <laughs> What did that do? That looked at that. Okay. Ah, oh, but I only need to do that. I'm actually there. Okay. Try to do it fast. <laughs> yeah, so, and I have to activate that one somehow. Let's see if I get the information down here. With another robot. Okay. I guess I have to look around a bit first before just trying something. So, as a robot, I need to be, as a human, I need to be staying there, and then a the robot can turn it on. I walk over. There's a robot. And then I can get up. And is that the whole puzzle? There's a room here. Very fascinating room. With two holders, this is. Holders. I'm guessing that's just to like transfer if you want. If you want to be blue, I want to be purple. Okay. Hmm. I could use one of these, which will probably help. Um. With the. Danny's elevators and the cameras. Not sure what I'll leave the other one for chest yet, so I'll leave both colors there just in case. Um, perfect. I think that might not so that might not even be necessary. Just be giving myself a headache. Actually it will be necessary. change to the other camera, but it doesn't seem like that's quite possible for me either, at least from that position. Um, is there such a case? Ah, oh, that one. Forget about that one. So that one also needs to be purple or green, depending on the timings. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Lovely puzzle. Okay. 
Excuse me. Thank you. Okay, so this is time well. I'm assuming it won't. Because it is. So as this goes up, this must be on the side. Uh, but the time is out to sync. As expected. And same with this side. Yeah, also out to sync. Which is fine. I just gotta swap these two around. Didn't actually need to use that intermediate one, but. Ah, it works, it works. Oh, does that work? Very dynamic. Okay, so this one's right. But that one. But this one isn't right. Okay, so if this one's... These two are synced, but this one isn't. That means... Oh yeah, these obviously have to be different because they go up at the same time. Okay, well, probably means, if anything, this one needs to be green. Because these two work together when they're opposite. Just to save me a walk, I'll use it until you get one. Okay. Yeah, that should do it. Cool, yo. Uh, Mr. Robot. To please turn off the elevator. Thank you. If you haven't got a... If you haven't got a dizzy yet. Then... Just wait a few seconds. Oops, too early. Gotta turn you on. Nice. You do this really fast if you try. <laughs> and if you look at it again. I think I got it. Okay, right on, Sector G65, is this for the highway? Are we still friends, Ava? We're colleagues, Tom. Close colleagues? Work colleagues. <laughs> Poor Tom, but not really, because he's a robot. Um, you can block this, which we're going to come for. Send the robot up there. It'll be I who makes the journey. Okay, what did you do? Ooh, moving light bridges. I haven't seen this yet. It does go through walls. Interesting. Wondering if we would like cap off somewhere or if like this half would be shut off, but no. It seems to just deal with it. It's respectable. I wonder if it completely clips through walls, even if it's none of it's connected. It does. Interesting. Obviously not game breaking. If that was a problem, I'm sure that's a Easy fix. Anyway, enough worrying about game mechanics and breaking submersiveness. Now the robot can join me now. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll get him up here just preemptively. Actually, let's see what's ahead of us. It hurts. Another switch. Um, 
there's another camera up there, but I can't seem to see it at the moment. Come on up. the interaction I was expecting, but fair enough. This made me wonder what this bridge is made up of. Pretty sure it moves the box in an earlier episode. Um, anyways, I'm here now. Ooh. Ooh, this is... I like this. Interestingly, it doesn't go through uh, ceilings, it seems. Like it does go through walls. Okay, light box of light. Good to know. Um, another good old puzzle element. That looks like the end. Uh, let's see what's on the other side here. Three levels to choose from. Here we've got the green. It seems to be powering our eggs there. Uh, let's leave that there for now. And up on top. We have... Uh, another ele elevational life bridge, okay, so we can use this to get back up here. Um, doesn't seem to be any reason to keep it straight up. And what's in here? Okay, so we've got another knock gate situation where we turn it on and off. I'm guessing the robot has to do that. Let's just see. Tom, come on through. Can you control this? You cannot. What can you control? If anything. Not much. I can go down, I can't go up. Interesting. Also, not forgetting about the big old um, gun turret machine thing that you had a few seconds ago. Um, but I think we can agree to disagree. Actually, as a robot, I can look at this, I can break this, and whatnot. So, ah, oh, but I'll have to be in a line of sight, I guess. So that's what this is for. Yeah, I'll just be up here. Not sure what a double bridge is for, but I might soon enough. I wonder if that was the intended solution. Might be. Just not too sure what the point of that uh, bridge is there then. Anyways, don't question a good point. Sick day. GGG. Ava, I don't wish to be heavy handed. The severity of your actions here are immense. Selfish action could create an extinction event. Do you understand? Ava? I get it. Well, he says we left him with the silent treatment. Robots don't know how to deal with the silent treatment. Probably. Okay. Oh, 
there for some reason. This pass is possible. Gosh dang it. Hmm. What happens to this door? That one? Okay, oh, hmm. Ah, hmm hmm. Hmm 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 hmm. Hmm 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 I like, I like these. Like, nothing else in this level uses this, you know? Like, all of these secret rooms have such, like, unique mechanics and, like, out-of-the-box thinking. Ah, oh, gotta love it. Thinking outside the box is the achievement I just got. So, yeah, literally just what I'm saying. This game is reading my mind. Wait a minute. Am I? Is this... Very obvious? Yes, okay. Um... Ooh, reading. I like my reading done in the form of voiceover. Okay. Page one. Dennett. We don't know these people. John Searle and I have a and I have a deep disagreement about how to study the mind. For Searle, it's all really quite simple. These are they are these bedrock time-tested intuitions we all have about consciousness and any theory that challenges them in is just pre preposterous. They really like the epic words, don't they? I, on the contrary, think that the persistent problem of consciousness is going to remain a mystery until we find such, a, some such dead obvious intuition and show that, in spite of first appearances, it is false. One of us is dead wrong, and the stakes are high. Searle so sees my position as a, a form of intellectual pathology. Patho pathology. No one should be surprised to learn that the feeling is mutual. For his part, he has one argument, the Chinese room, and he has, he has been trotting it out, basically unchanged, for 15 years. It has proven to be an amazingly popular number among the non-experts in spite of the fact that just about everyone who knows anything about the field dismissed it long ago. It is full of well-concealed fallacies by Searle's own count. There are over a hundred published attacks on it. He can count them. There's over a hundred. He can count them, but I guess he can't read them. I see. For in all those years, he has never, to my knowledge, responded in detail to the dozens of devastating criticisms they contain. He just presented the basic th thought experiment over and over again. I just went back and counted. I am dismayed to discover that no less than seven of those published criticisms are by me. In 1980, 82, 84, 85, 87, 90, 91, and 93, Cyril debated me furiously in the pages of the NYRB back in 1982. Hey, these are these are old <laughs> papers or um, accounts, because I'm being like the 22nd century. Anyway, I continue. When Douglas Hofstadter and I first exposed the cute tricks that make the Chinese room work, that was the last time Cyril addressed any of my specific criticisms until now. Now he trots out the Chinese room yet one more time and he has the audacity to ask now why does Dennett not face the actual argument as I have just as I have stated it? Why does he not tell us where of the three premises he rejects in the Chinese room argument? Why does he not tell us which of the three premises he rejects in the Chinese room argument? Okay. Well, because I have already done so in great detail in several of the articles, he has never deigned, deigned, deigned to answer. For instance, in Fast Thinking, way back in the Intentional Starts 1987, I explicitly quoted his entire three-premise argument and showed exactly why all three of them are false. 
When given the interpretation they need for my argument to go through, why didn't I repeat that 1987 article in my 1991 book? Because unlike Cyril, I had gone on to other things. I did, however, cite my 1987 article prominently in a footnote, page 436, and noted that Cyril's only response to it had been simply to declare, without argument, that the points offered there were irrelevant. The pattern continues. Now he both ignores the challenge and goes on to misrepresent the future criticisms of the Chinese room and that I offered in the book under review. But perhaps he has forgotten what I actually wrote in the four years it has taken him to write his review. But enough about the Chinese room. What do I have to offer on my side? I have my candidate, candidate for the fatally false intuition, and it is indeed the, the false intuition Cyril invites the reader to share with him. That the conviction that we know what we're talking about when we talk about that feeling, oh my goodness. But enough about the Chinese room. What do I have to offer on my side? I have my candidate for the fatally false intuition and it is indeed the very intuition Cyril invites the reader to share with him. The conviction that we know what we're talking about when we talk about that feeling. You know, the feeling of pain, that is the effect of the stimulus and the cause of the dispositions to react. The quail, the intrinsic content of the subjective state. How could anyone deny that? Just watch. But you have to pay close attention. I develop my destructive arguments against this intuition by showing how a, an objective science of consciousness is possible, after all, and how Searle's proposed first person alternative leads to self-contradiction and paradox at every turning. This is the deepest mistake in my book, according to Searle, and he sets out to exp this is the deepest this is the deepest, this is the deepest mistake in my book, according to Cyril, and he sits out to expose it. The trouble is that the objective scientific method I describe under the alarming name of uh, heterophenomenology under the alarming name of heterophenomenology is nothing I invented. It is, in fact, it is, in fact, exactly the method tactically endorsed and relied upon by every scientific work, scientist working on that consciousness, including Crick, Endelman, and Rosenfeld. They have no, <laughs> they have no truck with Searle's intrinsic content and ontological subjectivity. They know better. Okay. Well, it seems to be a bit of a uh, yeah, so a bit of a battle between the legitimacy of the Chinese room, uh, and it obviously argues against it, and John Searle seems to base his whole life on it. Oh boy! Oh, there's a lot of reading. There's a lot of there's a lot of reading. Okay, well. Um, I can, I'm going to read them, and you can skip to this time, if you don't want to sit through it all. How does that sound? Okay, here it goes. The Imitation Game. Good movie. I propose to consider the question, can machines think? The new form of the problem can be described in terms of a game, which we call the imitation game. It is played with three people, a man, a woman, and an interrogator, who may be of either sex. The interrogator stays in a room apart from the other two. The object of the game for the interrogator is to determine which of the other two is the man and which is the woman. He knows them by labels X and Y. And at the end of the game, he says either X is A and Y is B, or X is B and Y is A. The interrogator is allowed to put questions to A and B. 
we now ask the question, what will happen when a machine takes part of a, of a in this game? With the interrogator decide wrongly as often when the game is played like this as he does when the game is played between a man and a woman? These questions replace our original these questions replace our original can machines think? Can machines think? The question and answer method seems to be suitable for introducing almost anyone of the fields of human endeavor that we wish to include. We do not wish to penalize the machine for its inability to shine in beauty competitions, nor to penalize a man for losing in a race against an aeroplane. The conditions of our game make these disabilities irrelevant. The witnesses can brag if they consider it advisable as much as they please for that, about their charms, strength, or heroism, but the interrogator cannot demand practical demonstrations. Okay. So this is also the Turing test, but I guess uh, the imitation game, the Turing test. <laughs> I watched the movie The Imitation Game with Benadryl Cucumber Patch, but um, and he played Alan Turing, I believe. So uh, maybe you've got renamed after him or something. Um, not too sure about the history about that. Sounds interesting though. Might look it up later. You, you, you get to if you want. The game may perhaps be criticized on the ground that the odds are weighted too heavily against the machine. If the man were to try and pretend to be a machine, he would clearly make a very poor showing. He would be given away at once. Oh, I'm going to restart this one. The game may perhaps be criticized on the ground that the odds were weight, weighted too heavily against the machine. If the man were to try and pretend to be the machine, he would clearly make a very poor showing. He would be given away at once by his slowness and inaccuracy in arithmetic. May not machines May not machines carry out something which ought to be described as thinking, but which is very different from what a man does? This objection is a very strong one, but at least we can say that if nevertheless machines, a machine can be constructed to play the imitation game satisfactorily, satisfactorily, we need not be troubled by the objection. It might be urged that when playing the imitation game, the best strategy for the machine may possibly be something other than imitation of the behavior of a man. This may be, but I think it is unlikely that there is any great effect of this kind. In any case, there is no intention to investigate here the theory of the game and it will be assumed that the best strategy is to try and provide answers that will naturally be given by a man. Excerpts from the computing and machinery and intelligence. Alan Turing. Okay, so this is this is actually by Alan Turing. It's cool. Um, I guess he calls it the imitation game. Others call it the Turing test. And the Lord God formed a man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. From the Bible, that wasn't obvious. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, this is the theological side, it seems. I now proceed to consider opinions opposed to my own. The theological objection thinking is a function of man's immortal soul. God has given us, God has given an immortal soul to every man and woman, but not any other animal or to machines. Hence, no animal or machine can think. The heads in the sand objection, the consequences of machines thinking, would be too dreadful. Let us hope and believe that they cannot do so. It's just the, like, living um, negligence, I guess. The mathematical objection, the 
a mathematical objection. There are a number of results of mathematical logic which can be used to show that there are limitations to the powers of discrete state machines. The best known of these results is known as Godel's theorem and shows that any sufficiently powerful logical system, statements can be formed which can neither be proved nor disproved within the system unless possible, unless possibly the system itself is inconsistent. If you have any trouble understanding that, you're not alone. The argument from consciousness. This argument is very well expressed in Professor Jefferson's Lister Oration for 1949, from which I quote, not until a machine can write a sonnet or compose a concerto because of thoughts and emotions felt, and not by the chance fall of symbols could we agree that machines equal brain, that is, not only write it, but know that it had written it. No mechanism could feel, and not merely artificial, artificially signal an easy contrivance. Pleasure at its success, grief at its Grief when its valves fuse. Be warmed by flattery. Be made miserable by mistakes. Be charmed by sex. Be angry or depressed when it cannot get what it wants. Arguments from various disabilities. These arguments take the form I grant you that you can make machines do all the things you have mentioned. But you will never be able to make one to X. Numerous features X are suggested in the connection I offer a selection. In the connection I offer a selection. Be kind, resourceful, beautiful, friendly, have initiative, have a sense of humor, tell right from wrong, make mistakes, fall in love, enjoy strawberries and cream, make someone fall in love with them. Learn from experience, use words properly, be the subject of its own thought, have as much diversity of behavior as a man, do something really new. Do something really new, that's interesting. Some, some AI can, artificial intelligence can do something new, may not be able to understand it. Um, Lady Loveless, Lady Loveless's Objection. Our most detailed information of Babbage's analytical engine comes from a memoir by Lady Lovelace. In it, in it, she states, the analytical engine has no pretensions to originate anything. It can do whatever we know how to order it to perform her italics. This statement is quoted by Hartree, who adds, this does not imply that it may not be possible to construct electronic equipment which will think for itself, or in which, in biological terms, one could set up a conditional reflex which would serve as a basis for learning. Whether this is possible in principle or not is a stimulating and exciting question, suggested by some of these recent developments, but it did not seem that the machines constructed or projected at the time had this property. Argument from the continuity in the nervous system. The nervous system is certainly not a discrete state machine. A small error in the information about the size of a nervous impulse impinging on a neuron may make a large difference to the size of the output and impulse. It may be argued that, this being so, one cannot expect to be able to mimic the behavior of a nervous system with a discrete state system. I know what those words mean in separate. Anyway, hopefully at least uh, some of you will find this interesting. I'm finding I'm finding a lot of it inter interesting, like the different uh, cases for why or why not a computer would be able to think like a human. Makes you think. Oh, yeah, we got Cyril. Uh, thought experiments are important because a lot of the time you can't carry out an actual experiment. And this is true, not only in philosophy, but in science as well. So when Einstein said, imagine that you are sitting on a beam of light going into outer space. 
of a support experiment. He will go and say, let's get on a beam of light. Of course, you miss the point if you say, well, we'd fall off, or it would be too cold. So thought experiments are always useful, and you test your concepts by imagining what it would be like if such a, and such were the case. Well, in this particular case, I imagined that I imagined what it would be like if I followed a program for answering questions in Chinese and giving back answers in Chinese. Even though I don't understand a word of Chinese, and that was a very useful thought experiment because it enables us to see the computation by itself isn't thinking. Oh my goodness, I definitely put the emphasis in the wrong places there. He continues. Consciousness exists only in so far as it is experienced by a human or animal subject. Okay, now grant me that consciousness is genuine biological phenomenon. Oh, all the same, it's somewhat different from other biological phenomena because it only exists in so far as it is experienced. However, that does give it an interesting status. You can't refute the existence of consciousness by showing that it is just an illusion because the illusion slash reality distinction rests on the difference between how things consciously seem to us and how they really are. But, the, but where the very existence of consciousness is concerned, if it consciously seems to me that I'm conscious, then I am conscious. You can't make the illusion of such reality distinction for the very exist existence of consciousness the way you can for sunsets and rainbows because the distinction is between how things consciously seem and how they really are. Consciousness is a biological property like digestion or photosynthesis. Now why isn't that screamingly obvious to anybody who's had an education? And I think the answer is these twin traditions. On the one hand is God, the soul and immortality that says it's really not part of the physical world. And then there is the almost as bad tradition of scientific materialism that says it's not part of the physical world. They both make the same mistake. They refuse to take consciousness on its own terms as a biological phenomenon like digestion or photosynthesis or mitosis or meiosis or any other biological phenomenon. I just added big words at the end to make it sound even cooler. I wonder if these are like real extracts from someone of like this is all in the game. I think we all really have conscious states to remind everyone of the fact that uh, I think we all have conscious states to remind everyone of this fact I asked my I think we all really have conscious states to remind everyone of this fact I asked my readers to perform the small experiment of pinching the left forearm with the right hand to produce a small pain the pain has a certain sort of qualitative feeling to it and such qualitative feelings are typical of the various sorts of conscious events that form the content of our waking and dreaming lives. Such events are the data which a theory of consciousness is supposed to explain. In my account of consciousness, I start with the data, then it denies the existence of the data. To put it as clearly as I can, in his book, Consciousness Explained, then it denies the existence of consciousness. Does he? Um, anyway, he says correctly that when I wrote my review, I took his book to be his definitive statement of his position on the Chinese room and did not consult his earlier works. In fact, I did not know that he had produced a total of seven published attacks on the one short argument of mine until I saw his letter. He now claims to have refuted all three premises of the argument in 1987, but I have just reread the relevant chapter of his book and find he did nothing of the sort. 
nor did he make a serious effort to attack the premises. Rather, he misstates my position as being about consciousness rather than about semantics. He thinks that I am, I am only concerned to show that the man in the Chinese room does not consciously understand Chinese at all, because the syntax of the problem is not sufficient for the understanding of semantics of a language. Whether conscious or unconscious, furthermore, he presupposes a kind of behaviorism. He assumes that a system that behaves as if it had mental states must have mental states, but that kind of behaviorism is precisely what is challenged by the argument. So I have to confess that I don't know, I don't find uh, that the weakness of his arguments in his recent books is helped by his 1987 arguments. Losing my voice a bit. Uh, arguments to perform the italics. This statement is quoted by Hartree, 1949, who adds, This does not imply. Is this from before? This does not imply that it may not be possible to construct electronic equipment which will think for itself, or in which, in biology, biological terms, one could set up conditional reflex which would serve as a basis for learning. Whether this is possible in principle or not is a simulating question. Simulating an exciting question, such as by some of the sort, some of these recent developments. But it did not seem that the machines constructed or projected at time had this property. Yeah, it looks like this was part of the other one. Or maybe kind of references, like the pinching of the arm. Was that in this one? Yeah. Pinch your left arm, it's quality data. Oh boy. Um Yeah. Okay. Lots of reading, lots of interesting concepts. A lot of it's already escaped my mind to be honest. Um, yeah, let's just move on to the puzzles. This way. Ooh. What level are we up to? 56. 66. 